Hey guys, this is Colin of Clean Air Heating and Cooling and today we are insulating some ductwork. We got this installed recently. We used mastic to seal all of the joints and that's important so that we don't lose heat uh, and air through those joints into the crawl space which depressurizes the house and makes the house suck in cold air in the wintertime from un unwanted spaces such as this dusty crawl space. The reason we insulate the ductwork is so that heat doesn't radiate and um, come out through, you know, uh, you know, radiation or convection out of the duct. There's no heat transfer. So, um, the material that we're using today is this um, foil type insulation. And here we have some six inch runs and about every two feet or so, we have to install this. And the way I like to do it is just overlap it by a few inches like this and then cut it. And since I have a length to do, I will probably use about four of those for this length. I like to cut four of these for myself, all the way. And I've got a few more cut from before the video started, so I'm going to stop there. Then what I like to do here is, actually I'll show you what you don't want to do. You don't want to let your tape just seal back on. So ideally you want to put a tab on it like this every time you use it so it's easy to grab and peel open. Some of the watch outs, this can rip like in half and go weird like that on you. So try to keep the pressure equal across the board. Now, sometimes you can actually rip this like this and then you fold this back in immediately. And then this is a piece that I demonstrated with. I'll show you one more piece the right way. And you just wanna keep that together for now. And then again, If you can't rip it like that, I'm going to put it there on the spot, you can cut it. So I'll show you the next one. So I'm going to go ahead and put a tab on it for next time. I'm going to show you this approximately two feet apart. I'll put this on here. And then I will show you this next one what to do. If you cannot break it like that, the trick to breaking it is to keep your fingers extremely close and rip with a lot of like determination so that you don't stretch the tape because then you can't rip it. Anyway, if you can't do that, what you can do is just put a little, make sure your fingers are not behind it, put a small little sliver in it. And at that point, you can definitely continue to rip it all the way. Then you put a tab on it for next time so you can use it, have to fight and struggle with it and waste time. And then just keep on going like this. Since I am I'll put one more and then I will show you how to put the actual insulation on. I will talk my way through it real quick just to explain why we do this. The reason we have to, to put these spacers here, it's end of 22 and as of the last several years, um, State of Washington Energy Code requires R8 insulation on all exposed ductwork and this insulation is about this insulation is about R6 on its own, um, and if we put this air gap here, it becomes R8. So that's why we do this. There are different kinds of insulation out there. We like to use this because it doesn't have fibers, and since it doesn't have fibers, it's easier to breathe in here. The other trick I want to show you is, obviously I can put this up here and struggle with it to cut it, measure it. So what I want to do is measure how long does this next piece have to be to cover this and still have a couple inches to overlap. So I will take a piece of the spacer. It will go on top of one of these, not on the pipe because that would give me the wrong diameter. So I'll go on top of this pipe and I'm going to overlap about two or three inches right here. So at this point I could cut it or just hold it right here. What I like to do is hold it there, unspool this up to this point and then over at this point, I'm going to start here and just kind of follow these, these lines, which on this material, they're actually pretty much perpendicular or, or square. And you have to be careful not to cut what's behind it or the vapor barrier or your fingers or anything else behind. And then first, Thing I do is I try to dry fit it to make sure it actually um, has a little bit of overlap and it looks like 
In this case, I cut it too short. So it's a great example in my demo. <laughs> I think I just went sideways with it, or maybe my previous cut wasn't actually square and it actually cut into this edge over here. I seem to have it up. So let's try that again. I will use this as a template and I will add two inches to it. And I'm going to go across perpendicular like this. I think I remember my previous step was not really that accurate. So first of all, I'm going to try this on. I have plenty of overlap. There's a couple inches here, about three inches on this hand. So next what I like to do is I like to get a piece of tape, just like a five, six inch piece, something like this. Again, every time I use this, I put a tab on it. It's a bit of time, takes a couple seconds, but it will save you minutes down the road. And here what I like to do is, um, I just like to either tack this, there's a couple ways. I can either tack this right here, like this, so it stays in place, or I could actually tack them together. I like to do it like this because next piece of tape, I put right here in the middle, and then I go all the way around. Okay, and here it's important to do it on top of your spacer so you have some backing. Otherwise, if you collapse this right onto the pipe, you're basically wasting that spacer and you're not getting that desired uh, R8 value of insulation. So again, I'm overlapping the tape as well. And then I'm going to do the same on this end, but on top of that spacer. Usually you want to put three to four spacer, spacers for each one of these lengths. And here I'm not going to put a tab because I'll use it right away. So here, same thing. Actually, let's see, the spacer is right here. And the tab is going to come and punch me now because I didn't do it. And then again, you cut it. Make sure this lays really well. Here, I kind of got it wrinkled. Try to avoid that if you can. And I use the back of my fingernails to make sure there is no air gaps because air gaps will allow dust to get underneath. And by next year or a couple years down the road, as this thing gets hotter and colder over time, it's going to crack and dry out and get loose and fall apart. So this circular piece of the tape is going to be what's going to give this longevity so that 10 years, 15 years down the road, this is still mounted on here. Now we just have to finish this right here by putting a piece the long way, and I'm going to split the tape half on this piece, half on the other piece. And so I'm going to do that. this and that piece right there is really good I guess I could keep going further and show you how I go around elbows maybe I'll save you the time and I'll do another video for that but you can probably figure out your own angles on the videos for now this is how you install it if you have any questions feel free to call text me 360-398-9400 or just put a comment and I can respond to you as soon as I can thank you